answer. That's not the way to go. Then you know what happens? We reduce God to a formula rooted in some form of outward obedience. Right? In, in other words, we make, make faith something of the law, of works. Faith actually is the opposite of the law. There was no faith in the days of the Old Testament. It was all works. Law is very exhausting. You have to keep trying to do more and more and more. But faith is effortless. It's about trusting what has already been done by Jesus at the cross. Can you catch up with me? Yes, we lift up our eyes this morning for your present need. We join our hearts together and we look to Jesus because it has all been already done at the cross. And in Mark chapter 9, verses 17 to 27, you get this beautiful story, very touching, very moving story. Uh, I'm not going to read everything, but I will just summarize it. Uh, there, was, uh, the, there was a father... And he had a son, and the son was demon-possessed. And he approaches, Jesus couldn't get to Christ, and he came to his disciples, and he was desperate for a miracle. You know, to have a boy, to have a son, demon-possessed, is a desperate situation. Have you seen demon-possessed people? Have you seen the torment? Have you seen the trial, the sorrow? And this father describes and says, My son is so possessed, sometimes he falls into water, sometimes into the fire, and it has been with him from childhood. When Christ questioned him, he expressed his great distress with a boy who was in great trouble. And he came to the disciples. And the disciples already tried praying for the boy but they don't see an answer to their prayer Mark 9, 17 and 18 and the disciples and the father now they are in a dilemma their own efforts their own prayer efforts have failed haven't we been in situations like that our efforts failed and you find in this story the boy's father wants to believe 9, 22 and 24 he wants to have enough faith. He tells Jesus, if you can, he says things like that. He is in doubt, he doesn't know. He says things like, help me, help my unbelief. He is in, he is in doubt. Have you ever felt that way? Don't know enough of Jesus? Are you somewhere there? You have a desperate situation, you have a boy in trouble, you have a child in disease just now. Do you feel you don't know enough of Jesus? You are new to this kind of faith? Do you feel insecure? Have you ever dealt with doubt? Have you ever felt that your faith was not strong enough? Have you been there? Yes or no? I have been there. Have you been there? Yes. Sometimes when we catch a common flu and a cold and that thing is racking our body, then also we go somewhere there, isn't it? Yes, that's human nature. But this morning, I have very good news for you. Gospel is good news. In the house of the Lord, there's always good news. <coughs> Jesus shows us once again that all we need is found in Him. Christ is telling that Father, believe in Him, me, who always has enough faith. Isn't that good? Believe in me. Believe in the Christ whose faith does not waver. Isn't that good? Huh? Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the one who believes all things are possible for him. Jesus knows that he can do all things. Jesus knows all things are possible for him. Jesus knows that. Jesus is the one who never wavers. He's the one who never doubts. He's the one who always believes. He knows what his father has said will be done. Jesus always believes. So when your faith runs out, 
his faith doesn't when you feel like your faith is unstable his faith remains the same when you when your faith is weak his faith is strong so what do you do this morning you put your faith in his faith on your behalf do that will you do that put your faith in his faith turn away your eyes from yourself faith in your faith no put your faith in his faith and his faith will work on your behalf is that good are you with me don't go quiet right so we can be we can be so works conscious that we turn everything into a work even faith we are hurrying up our faith you know making it we trying to make it work when we are very works conscious we feel we have to do something but faith is not a work my brothers and sisters faith is a rest that we enter into it's a state of being resting that god jesus is well able your bad situation some dilemma you are in you are struggling for your boy like that father was you are using um, you know every word in the vocabulary to try and hurry him up or hurry her up into that which is good for him or for her you see rest enter into the rest of jesus this morning let his faith work for you i want to take you a little bit deeper romans chapter 10 verses 5 and 6 you get it in the newsletter this morning did you get a newsletter we had newsletters around yes so romans chapter 10 verses 5 and 6 for moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law the one who does these things will live by them that's what moses is writing moses is writing about the law that the one who does them will live by them but the righteousness of faith speaks like this so moses says the righteousness that comes from the law the man who does them will live by them but the righteousness of faith what does it do righteousness of faith will you speak up speaks will you open your mouth and say speaks can you say can you speak without opening your mouth try to do that speak without opening your mouth no so now we are going to speak this morning okay every one of us we are all going to participate you yeah? are every one of us we have a need isn't it then we are going to speak the speak what god has provided so the righteousness of faith speaks say with me righteousness of faith speaks very good so let me say something more about faith you cannot have faith without speaking it it's very simple when we faith we speak it right faith we don't have to do it but faith we speak it and when you study romans chapter 10 you will notice it says righteousness which is of the law does of the law we have to do things but righteousness of faith speaks is that good righteousness of faith speaks so it's not just enough it's not enough to know in your mind that you are righteous that you have a right standing that your sins were washed away right that the cross made a difference in your life the eye was cut off and the cross came into our life a new door was open when we come to jesus and accept him as our savior and we receive what god what the lord jesus christ did at calvary then th- that is the cross and then we are made righteous right is not enough to know that our sins are behind us it's always necessary to confess it that i am righteous in christ 
Will you be able to say that? I am righteous in Christ. That's Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. So confessing your righteousness in Christ keeps you always conscious of Jesus. When I say I am the righteousness of Christ, I am always conscious of Jesus in my life. How do we confess over our own life? Every time you speak and say I am the righteousness of Christ, I have the right standing with Jesus. I have a right standing with Jesus not because I am a good person but because of Calvary. Because of the blood of Jesus, I have a right standing with God. Is that good? Is that okay? This morning did you shout at your boys at home? Did you shout at the husband? Did you bang the door? Did you... Um, did something get burnt in the kitchen and get upset? Right? But thanks be to God, we can put it all behind the cross. And we can this morning declare, I am the righteousness of God. I have a right standing with Christ. So when we magnify his finished work on the cross, we believe and we speak a truth. What's the truth about yourself? You are the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Will you believe that about yourself? Because very often I hear people saying, I am a sinner, I am a vile sinner, I am a hopeless sinner, I can never do it, I know I am always getting it wrong. I hear mothers saying that over their children, you will never do that right. I hear parents saying these things about, over their children, saying you are like your grandfather or something like that you are never getting it right look at that man next door you will also go that way different things we speak but this morning I am teaching you I am helping you to change your speech will you change your speech this morning will you enter into the righteousness of Jesus Christ if you believe right you will live right if you believe right you will make it right. You will get it right. Is that good? You only have to believe right. You will live it right. Right? We complicate the gospel so much. When it is so simple, you will shortly see that. And as we consider the subject of faith, the Lord will give us understanding why so many Christians don't receive the breakthrough they desire. There's a breakthrough. Christians are looking for breakthrough. Christians are looking for miracles. Christians are looking for prophecies. Christians are looking for this and that. But it, the Bible says it is right there in your mouth. Dirukshani led us in the scripture. It is the word of faith that we are preaching is right there in your mouth. Romans chapter 10. It's right there in your mouth. The word of faith is right there in your mouth. In whose mouth? In the preacher's mouth? In every one of our mouths. Will you touch your, hand, uh, touch your mouth and say, The word of faith is in my mouth. Amen. So out of our tongue will not flow bitter and sweet words. Out of our tongue will not flow words that have no faith and words of faith. Is that good? Yes, when you go home today, the spouse that didn't come to church is going to say, What's happened? The words have changed. Go and tell him or tell her, I am the righteousness of Christ. I have words of faith in my mouth. Is that good? Yes, every one of us, we are going to change the way we speak at home, at office, when we travel. When we associate with people, our language is going to change. It's, it is very important. That makes the difference in a Christian's life. The breakthrough comes as we speak the word of faith over our own life. Many are not speaking what they believe about God's word. You know, we believe something about God's word. We believe God is able. We believe the, the impossibilities for man are possible with God. We 